Our floor plans have elevation tags, which generate the elevations for the different structures we create in Revit. These elevation tags can be customized to have different looks associated with them. To do this, start by zooming in on one of your existing elevation tags. In this case, we're in floor plan one, first floor. This elevation tag is actually made up of two different parts. The first part is called the body. And we can see that it's the square over toward the left-hand side of this elevation tag. If you select on it, you'll then see four different arrows or triangular shapes that appear. If you click off of that, you'll see that there's only one of those triangular shapes. What this part indicates is that this elevation tag is looking in this direction or in the direction that the arrow is pointing. Now both the body and the arrow can be customized to have whatever look you need them to have. To do this, start by selecting on the elevation tag's body. Come up here to Edit Type under the Properties, and you'll see that elevation tag next to it has words called half inch square. This is indicating the properties associated with this elevation tag, or what this elevation tag is really called. It's a half inch square elevation tag. If we click where those words are at, we'll see a button next to it. Click on that button on the right hand side. When you do, you'll see elevation mark properties. And next to elevation mark, we'll see that this is an elevation mark body square detail number. Now try to remember that. It's the detail number with the elevation mark body square. If you select where it has that, you'll see that there's a pull down list. And you'll see a variety of different elevation mark bodies. Some of them are circles, others are squares. They also discuss such things as the filled arrows, detailed numbers, and some other pieces of information. Click on Elevation Mark Body Square Filled Arrow so you can see the difference in the properties of our symbol over here on the left hand side. Click on OK, click on OK again, and now we can see that our elevation tag, or elevation mark, now has this arrow that is now filled in because that's the one that we chose off of the list. Now these properties are controlled through the elevation tag family itself. And we can find this in the project browser, underneath families, expand out annotation symbols, and then you'll see elevation mark body circle and elevation mark body square. These are two of the ones that I pointed out when we were inside of that previous dialog box. The filled arrow one, this is the one that we selected to get this filled arrow here with our elevation tag. To make a change to our elevation tag so that it looks different, we can click on the actual name of this family. In this case, it's called Elevation Mark Body Square. Right click on it and then go to Edit. When you do, it'll take you to the family editor. In the family editor, this is actually two separate families. The first family is that square shape. And if we wanted to draw in using our lines or filled regions, a different shape, such as a circle, an ellipse, an oval, we could do that. Personally, I recommend leaving it either a square or a circle because Revit handles those better with our arrows. The other family that is here, and if I select on one of these arrows we have up here at the top, is what's gonna be called the pointer. It's actually the arrow that I've been referring to. Its technical name is the pointer. And if we come up and select on Edit Family on the ribbon after selecting on the pointer, we'll then be taken into the family editor for that arrow. From here, we could once again use the same kinds of line tools, filled region tools I was pointing out in the square to adjust the way that the pointer itself looks. If I would select here, I could delete it. I could draw in a new sketch so that this had a greater size to it, maybe a different slope angle to the point. Any kind of change we'd want to make it custom to the way that our drawings would typically look. Also, we have text here, ones, and the reference and view name. This text is called a label. And if we select on the piece of text, we'll notice underneath properties on the left-hand side that this label, the text itself, has properties related to its alignment, such as vertical alignment or horizontal alignment. But also, there's label and edit. If you click on that edit button, we'll see the property that's being shown here in the label. In this case, it's the detail number. Now I'll drag this back a little bit more onto the screen again. 
If we wanted to change this detail number out with a different piece of information, such as the view name, we could do that. Just click on the view name and then click on the button called Add Parameters to Label. Click on OK. And now we can see there's that original one, the number one, and now the view name is right next to it. If we want to change this, get rid of the view name, we can do that. We could either come over to the left hand side and once again select on the Edit button next to Label, or another spot where we could select is on the ribbon where it says Edit Label. It brings up the same Edit Label dialog box where we can highlight on the piece of information we want to get rid of and then select on the red arrow to remove the parameter from the label. Now, these are the only parameters that you can have. If you want to have a custom parameter that has a different piece of information, you won't be able to add that to this arrow or to the actual body of the elevation symbol. So you need to use one of these different parameters. In this case, go ahead and leave the detail number the way that it is, and then click on OK. If we wanted to change the size of this piece of text, we could click on that, come over here, select on Edit Type, and then change this to be a different font, a different text size, or even a different width piece of text. So we have a lot of control over the display of this information. Click on OK. The next thing you would do would be come up here to load in the project if you made a change to this arrow or to the pieces of text that are inside of there. In this case, I'll select on load in the project and you'd want to load this into the elevation mark body square. It would ask, do you want to overwrite the existing version or do you want to overwrite the existing version and its parameter values? Usually I just choose overwrite the existing version. When you do, if you'd made any changes, you'd now see those changes inside of the family. Also, if you wanted to change this from being a box to a circle, you could do that by just coming up here to create, line, and then drawing in a circular shape or whatever you wanted for the body of your elevation tag. Also, there's the label here. And with this label, just like with the labels that we had up here, you can change the size from being 330 seconds to a different size. You can also adjust the alignment of the text of the label. And if you would select on edit next to label here, here you can see you have the same kind of options, the same information that can be displayed inside of the box. I'm going to click on OK to this. I don't really want to make any changes. Just know that if you did decide to make a change to maybe the size of the box, make it bigger or smaller, or maybe you did the same thing with the arrows, try to keep it as either being a square or a circle because Revit tends to like those kinds of shapes a little bit better. You can then come up here to load in the project. Choose the project that you want to load it into. In this case, it's called Elevation Marks. It'll ask, do you want to overwrite the existing version? In this case, I'll accept that. It'll even ask, do you want to override the subcomponent, which is that arrow that was in there? I'll tell it yes. And now any changes that were made would now reflect in that arrow that you have for your elevation symbol here in your plan view.